Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mount Olive on this beautiful summer day. Uh, down by where I live, we had a few thunder showers last night, a little bit of rain. Maybe if I turn on the microphone, it'll work better. Thank you. Um, bulletin announcements are printed for your benefit. We do have um, uh, one, well, two other things we include in today a prayer on behalf of um, Glenda. Meyer, um, who is having her unit turned on tomorrow and programmed. So we're hoping that that will help with her um, Parkinson's. Also, uh, Iowa, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done for cleanup and recovery in Iowa after their big storm that they had last month. And uh, they are looking for volunteers. Um, last I heard, our South Dakota disaster relief truck, uh, or not truck, trailer, needed someone to take it, drive it, to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So if you know someone who I assume would have a pickup that would be big enough to haul it, drive down there. It's about a six hour drive, or six. No, 600 mile drive from here to there. It would be an overnight and then drive back the next day, um, I'm assuming. If you know someone who could do that, that would be awesome. They may have it already taken care of, but then also um, there are other means that we can help out and if um, we'll have that information posted uh, this week. Um, and if you uh, want to help uh, before then, just get in touch with me, and I'll put you in contact with the means to do that. Our first hymn is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. When we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then reflect upon God's word, our sin, and his grace. We confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and your
in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 through 9. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear, hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you not, do not speak the, to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person will die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person will die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. The epistle lesson is recorded in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 10. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers do not, are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore we must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, Revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the love, the one who loves another, has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands and two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the fire of hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go search for the one that went astray? And if, if he finds it, 
Tr truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of the Father, my Father who is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you uh, agree on earth about, or about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing Shepherd of Tender Youth. <laughs> Went astray. 
And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ, the disciples seem to be preoccupied and in constant bickering over who is the greatest. On this and on other occasions, they come to Jesus and in one form or another, ask him, tell him, or whatever him, who is the greatest. There is one time when they even set their mom up to talk to Jesus and tell him to give our my boys the highest seat of honor when you come into your kingdom. And mom did it because she wanted her boys to be great in the kingdom of heaven. What a good mom. Who is the greatest? And you would expect that the disciples had in their mind and that they expected Jesus to have in his mind, the greatest is loud mouth Peter. Every time Jesus asks a hard question, who pipes up first? It is loud mouth Peter. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Peter. Over and over and over, it's Peter, Peter, Peter. As a matter of fact, when Jesus spoke to Peter on that, on that occasion, we heard it a couple weeks ago, Jesus said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and therefore, believe it or not, the Roman Catholic Church declared Peter to be the most important in the kingdom of God. They declared him to be the first pope. Peter, loudmouth Peter. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus finds a little child. Apparently it was a boy. We've got two little girls here. <coughs> She's more interested in stack right now. <laughs> Jesus takes a little child, puts that child in the midst of those twelve egotistical, self-minded, self-interested disciples. And he says, unless you turn, remember that word, unless you turn and become like this little child, you shall never, powerful word, never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you turn. Because right now your attitude, your approach to me and to your faith and to the kingdom of God is completely messed up. You are looking for power and authority to be able to rule over those who are around you and to subjugate anyone that you please. But, Jesus tells them, you must turn from that. You must repent of that ridiculous behavior and those ridiculous thoughts. Because the greatest in the kingdom is the one who is most humble. 
just as he points out, this little child who believes in me. This little child, who in Jesus' day especially had no power, no honor, no respect. They were the lowest of the low among all people. When I was growing up, there was a saying, and maybe you remember it too, children should be seen, but not heard. You could sit at the table, you could quietly eat your dinner, but don't you dare pipe up and ask a question about what's going on in that dinner conversation. If you have a question, after dinner's over, go ask your mom. Children should be seen, but not heard. Even in our day, at least in my remembrance, children who have no voice, no authority, no power, these are the ones that Jesus points to as first in the kingdom of heaven. These humble ones who have faith, who put their trust in their Savior, who look to Him for every good thing, these are the ones who are first in the kingdom of heaven. Give up your haughty ways. Give up your snooty attitude and live like one of these little ones. Question. In our society today, especially in these United States, who do we value? Who do we honor? Who do we hold high? Is it the children? I think not. Well, there's good old number one. Yeah. But beyond that, follow the money. And that money will give you a good idea of people and occupations that we honor in our society today. Who are some of the best paid people, individuals, in our country, in these United States? Entertainers? Hang on, we'll get there. Entertainers, movies, television, music. What's it cost to go to a concert when they have concerts again? Of a big name. At least a hundred bucks. And that's for a seat way up in the up in the clouds. Hundred bucks. How many meals for a child could a hundred bucks buy? Sports. I'm not against sports. But consider this. Oh, I forgot. There was, was one TV show, one sitcom, where the top cast was receiving, get this, one million dollars per episode. A million bucks a week. Now, should we 
pick on sports a little bit? Professional athletics. I have some friends who call it America's new idolatry, new religion. What are the contracts when they're playing? Football, baseball, hmm? basketball, soccer. In Europe, they call it football. What's with that? Anyway, I heard just recently there is a top football soccer player whose contract was, is, if you want to buy them out to your team, one hundred million a year. A hundred million a year. If you want to know who we respect and who we honor, Follow the money. We pay these entertainers, we pay these athletes huge amounts. But what do we pay those who teach and care for our children? Teachers. They make a decent living. They get by. Healthcare workers, nurses, others. They get a decent wage. But when you consider who they are teaching, who they are caring for, the people say, they say, the most precious of all And then you follow the money? Who ranks most important? It's not the teachers, it's not the healthcare workers, it's not the others, police, fire, others in the helping industries. As a matter of fact, and I don't want you to take this as a political statement, because I don't intend it this way. As a matter of fact, we pay people to kill unborn babies. Is that right? Is that respect for these little ones who believe? I say, obviously not. Jesus, you could sing it with me. Jesus loves the little children. All the children. Let's sing it. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Precious, precious in his sight. And if Jesus loves them, we know how precious and how important every single one is. Jesus says, for their angels behold the face of God every single day. This is where we get the idea that children have a guardian angel. I don't know if every child needs a guardian angel every single day, but we do know that God can and sometimes does send that guardian angel. I know for sure that God has sent guardian angels to my side I don't know how many times when I was growing up. You don't know the stupid things that I did when I was a kid. 
Why? Because to him, as a child, and even now, I am precious in his sight. And if they're precious to Jesus, should they not also have the honor and the respect that they deserve as children of God, children of the Heavenly Father? Jesus says, Look at what would what would you do if you were a shepherd and you had not a hundred sheep, one and go one goes astray. What would you do? We read the whole story and Luke, he goes off and searches for that little one until it is found and brings it home in rejoicing. And in Luke he says, There is more joy in heaven over that one who has returned than over the ninety-nine who stuck around. What do you do when your child goes astray? Ah, he's just going to get in trouble. She's just going to be the way she is. Jesus loves that child and will reach out and search and search and search. And sometimes the best that we can do as parents, family, loved ones, the best that we can do might be only to pray. <laughs> only to pray. But we know that prayer is powerful and that our Good Shepherd loves every single one and will search until he brings it home. Home to the safety, the truth of his kingdom. Because he honors each and every one. And unless we, as he said to Peter and the rest, unless we turn, unless we repent of our foolish attitude toward these young ones, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless we likewise humble ourselves and live in God's way and live in God's way, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I invite you to consider the children and beyond that, to consider all who have no voice, all who have no power, all who are dishonored in our society and world. And if you're wondering who that might be, more often than not, all you have to do is look in your backyard. They are there. They are here. They are always among us. You will find those who have that need who need a spokesperson to stand up, and not just to stand with, but to change, to change our attitudes, my personal attitude, your personal attitude, and the attitudes of our society as a whole. Jesus loves every single one and wants every single one to be with him in eternal glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise and confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. <coughs>
may be seated as we sing just as I am without one. <coughs> We 
We pray that you would give her the strength of confidence, the strength of faith, and the winsome ways to continue to bring that good news. Be with her, with her husband, and all who do this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Glenda Meyer as she uh, faces a new procedure tomorrow, that it may be successful and make a significant change in her daily life and well-being. Place your hand upon the doctors and staff who work with her, that she may indeed find relief and new, uh, a new respite from the difficulties she's been having. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice with Doug and Teresa Yerke at the birth of a grandson. Is that right? What's his name? Caden Franklin. Caden. Grandson Caden. We rejoice that all is going well with him and his parents. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue to be with them, help him to grow both in body and spirit, strengthen them, help him to trust in you as the day comes when he is received into your kingdom through the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant for the sake of your dear Son, our Savior, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. You may be seated as we sing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Go in peace and serve the Lord.